Good evening viewers and subscribers and welcome to another video. My name is Belly One Engineering. Now this video will serve as an addendum to my last video where we looked at roof and roof framing plan. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to be shedding a little more light on the subject as it relates to timber roof. Therefore, if you are a prospective builder of a home in Jamaica, or you're a student, or maybe you're someone who just wants to learn about building construction in Jamaica as it relates to timber roof, then you would want to stay tuned for this video. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Welcome back and I thank you for staying tuned and watching this video and as I've mentioned to you before in my intro, I'm going to be speaking to you about timber roof. Now, as it relates to a building, there are two types of roofing system. They are timber roof and they are slab roof. The main purpose of a roof is to protect the building and its occupant from the element, such as rain, snow, hail, sun, etc. And when it comes to aesthetics, in terms of your choice of the roofing system, the timber roof stands out. It adds to the beautification of your building as against the slab roof. So if you want your building to be aesthetically pleasing, you will opt to go for a timber roof. Many architects or draftspersons, what they do to come up with a good roofing design, they ensure to design the floor plan in such a way that when they fit the roof over that building or over that floor plan, the roof comes out with a special feature and will certainly add to the aesthetical looks or the beautification of your building. In terms of choice between your timber roof as against your slab roof, there is one important factor that you have to consider when you're making that choice, and that is cost. The timber roof is considerably more expensive than the slab roof. But in my opinion, one disadvantage that the slab roof has is that it is not aesthetically pleasing. And in addition, it absorbs far more heat energy during the course of the day as against your timber roof. So if it comes down to cost, I would say go with the slab roof. But if you want your building to be aesthetically pleasing, I would say go with the timber roof. And another point that I want to highlight about the slab roof is that concrete is very porous. And if that concrete roof is not cured properly, then it is going to be subjected to leaking. And you don't want to have the problem of having your slab roof leaking because I've come across some of them that, that start to leak and it is very difficult to fix that situation. So in terms of aesthetics, I would say go with the timber roof 
but is in terms of cost you can go with the slab roof and also another important disadvantage with the slab roof when it comes to heat the slab roof absorb five times more heat than your timber roof so you would want to weigh that in your decision making when you're deciding whether to choose the timber roof as against the slab roof as an addendum to my last video presentation on the reading of roof and roof framing plan there are a couple of vital information that wasn't brought to your attention that i think is worthy so in a recap i am going to reinforce that the roof framing of your building is constructed primarily with two members it is constructed with the two inches by eight inches which is used to form the structural integrity of your roof it is also constructed with the two inches by six inches lumber which is used as common rafter right throughout the construction of your roof the two inches by six inches is spaced at a distance of two feet six inches or 750 millimeter on center when it comes to the roof over and the there are a bit of worthwhile information that i didn't mention to you last week i didn't think i have touched on something that i think i should have brought to your attention is that the roof overhang and i've mentioned to you before where you can locate your roof overhang in the event that it is not shown on your roof plan or your roof elevation you can always go to your elevation and you can always go to your sectional views to obtain the length or the dimension of your roof overhang so the roof overhang is there to provide shading for the building and you know that we are in a tropical region and as a result we have gotten a lot of sunshine and a lot of heat penetration in our building due to the sun ultraviolet rays so what the eve does or the overhang does is to provide proper shading for the building so if you want more shading you can always increase the overhang but you have to be mindful that when you're increasing your roof overhang if your property is small be careful not to increase it that the runoff from your building is encroaching on other people's property so you have to be mindful about that so the roof overhang also provides the stormwater runoff that it does not run over your external doors and your windows because if you have the stormwater runoff from your roof penetrating your external doors and your windows you might have to in at some time carry out maintenance work to repair or change your external doors and your windows due to rotting and due to mildew so you want to take that into consideration so that is the function of the roof overhang 
I think it is worthy for the benefit of those who do not know. Some of us who are watching, I know they, you know, this is information that they have known already. But for the benefit of those who do not understand, I just think that it is worthwhile to give this information. In addition, it is advisable to install a guttering system around your finished roof. And the purpose of the guttering system is to catch the stormwater runoff from your roof and preventing it from going down all along your walls and eventually get down to your foundation and could cause your foundation to be eroded. Now, in Jamaica, there are primarily two types of guttering system. Of recent, I've noticed that much of the buildings that have been constructed, they are utilizing the concrete gutter bed. And in my opinion, the concrete gutter bed is a good choice because what the concrete gutter bed does, it prevents the roof from being uplifted when there is hurricane force wind. And the fact that it is concrete would evidently make it more resistance towards hurricane force wind. The other guttering system that is used is the aluminum guttering system. And that has been the system for quite some time. And that still is good because in Jamaica and in some parishes, it is mandatory to have some form of water storage. So what you can do, you can channel your rainwater from your roof into your catchment and store water. Another purpose for the guttering system is that you can catch that water and flow it down to a soakaway pit. And this is in the instance that the water from your roof is running off and entering the road. And the parish council at, at some time will tell you that, listen, the government does not want the water from your roof or from your property to run onto the road because that will evidently this destroy the road or deteriorate the road and cost the government money to effect repairs. So that is another good purpose for your guttering system. In addition to the concrete gutter bed, I must point out too that aesthetical wise is that it adds to the beautification of your building. Because some of the buildings that I've seen utilizes this catchment system, it really enhances the looks. Because what they do, they put drippings around the concrete guttering bed, and some of them, you know, paint it in different, different colors, and, you know, give it a different color from the actual color of the building, and it gives the building a good flavor. So that is something that is worth considering when you're doing your concrete guttering system or your aluminum system, the pros and the cons and the advantages, but advantages and the disadvantages. There is a critical piece of information that I didn't point out to you in my last presentation on the reading of roof 
and a roof framing plan. And that is the angle of the pitch of your roof. Now, in this roof in particular, the angle is 30 degrees. It is 30 degrees, which is formed from the bell beam up towards the highest point of your roof. And in the event that the architect or the draft person does not provide you, the builder, with the angle of the roof, they should put this symbol on the roof to indicate the slope of the roof or the angle of the pitch of the roof. And what this sim sim sig signifies is that this roof is a 7 to 12 roof which works out to be 30 degrees. Now you can use this information to calculate the angle of the roof. And as you can see here now, this is a right angle triangle with a rise of 12 and a run of 7. So let me go down and show you now how you can calculate the angle of the roof given the rise and the run. So it is tan theta equals to 7 over 12. And that translate in the tan inverse times 7 over 12, which will work out to be 30 degrees. So that is how you can use this right angle triangle, which signifies the roof pitch to work out your angle of your roof to construct your roof. And if that is not given, you can go to the internet and you just type in um, roof pitch and you can go to the roof pitch, the roof pitch chart here and you look for roof pitch and you see 7 over 12 which gives you 30.26 degrees. So that is a piece of information that I think is very pertinent to the construction of your roof. So that is it where that is concerned and I will see you in the next video.